Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Mature and Transfer Student Orientation. Today is part three of orientation session. It's called Juggling Roles as a Mature Student Learner. My name is Navani Samaru Durga, and I am the Coordinator of Mature Student Success at this Atkinson Center for Mature and Part-Time Students, Student Success Center at York University. Welcome to our session today. Okay, for today, we just have a couple of administrative stuff we'd like to go through with you, and it's about your Zoom experience with us. And if you would like, what I'm going to explain to you is at the top right corner of your screen, you have a speaker or gallery view in the top right hand corner. And we ask that you please keep your camera and microphone muted. You can actually look at us in speaker view. Um, and that will just show you who's speaking at the time, or you can do gallery view and you can see all of us in um, little square boxes. So whatever you prefer, that's up to you. Also, I'm just trying to see my screen here at the bottom, something is blocking it, sorry. Um, it, we would like for you to know that you can message any one of our staff members in the chat if you need assistance. And we ask that you please hold questions for the panelists until the question period at the very end. Our agenda for today will have welcoming remarks from our director, Brian Poser. I will speak on ACMAP's services. We will have a keynote speech by Kathy Boyd Withers from Learning Skills Specialist, Learning Skills Services at York University. We will have a mature students panelist part, and then we will speak on YEMSO, this York University Mature Student Organization. Um, for mature students and we'll do closing remarks. So for now, what I will do is I will hand it over to our director, Brian Poser, uh, for welcoming remarks. Go ahead, Brian. Thank you, Navani. Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to have you with us. Uh, I see that we have uh, in total so far 36 participants this morning and that's a great start. I'm sure others will trickle in as we go along. Um, I have a few quick items to share with you uh, and then I'm gonna pass it back uh, to Navani for some continued information. Um, now I'm just going to share my screen here. Um, I hope that's all right with you. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So first, um, it's a pleasure to have our mature and transfer students join us for this, our third installment of orientation. Uh, we've been uh, doing small sessions throughout the summertime to give people a very nice gradual ramp into the academic year and uh, we're delighted that you're joining us today. Um, of course, these uh, previous sessions and today's sessions uh, are recorded and uh, links to these are uh, available through our website. So make sure that uh, if you have questions about where to find those, maybe Dilraj can pop up a link for you through the chat and we can make sure you have access to that stuff. Um, as we begin our uh, online meeting, I'd like to do uh, the traditional land acknowledgement. Um, and at this meeting, it's, uh, we're in a virtual space. We're not all gathered in the same place physically. And um, so this rec uh, there's recognition that this land acknowledgement might not be for the territory you're currently on. For instance, um, our colleague, Kathleen, is out west in Vancouver. Um, so she would be from a different space. Uh, we ask that if this is the case, you take responsibility to learn about and acknowledge the traditional territory you're on and learn more about the current treaty holders from that area. As a member of the York community, I recognize that many indigenous nations have long-standing relationships with the territories upon which York University campuses are located. And those precede the establishment of York University. York University acknowledges its presence on the traditional territory of many indigenous nations, excuse me, indigenous nations. The area known as Takaranto has been caretaken by the Anishinaabek Nation, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron-Wendat. It's now home to many First Nation, Inuit, and Métis communities. We acknowledge the current treaty holders, the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation. This territory is subject of the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Belt Covenant, an agreement to peaceably share and care for the Great Lakes region. Now we uh, offer these land acknowledgements at the beginning of many formal proceedings at the university, and orientation is among those. And we hope that you'll take some time to reflect on this. If this is the first time, perhaps, that you're hearing a land acknowledgement, uh, you might wonder what that's all about. And this is part of our contribution to uh, shifting culture toward uh, recognizing and celebrating our Indigenous nations as part of the Truth and Reconciliations uh, Commission's work 
uh, earlier uh, in a few years back. So um, there's a lot of stuff to learn about here. And I've, uh, in my role, I've learned a lot about this stuff over the past four or five years, and I still have a lot to learn. So don't, don't feel like you're supposed to know this already. Um, you, you have time and energy perhaps to, uh, to engage that stuff over time and learn some more. Um, beyond that, I'd like to just make a couple of points um, that uh, are general in scope uh, and that you, you may have questions about or you may already have encountered information about. Maybe you've had these questions earlier in the summer and you've, uh, you've already been able to answer them. Uh, first of all, uh, we want to just touch on academic programming under COVID-19. Uh, when we first started our uh, online orientations back in June, this was relatively new and we were not sure what kinds of uh, preparations we would need to be making. We weren't sure what kinds of plans would be in store for us. At this stage of the summer, however, we know that the full range of courses uh, will be offered at York. Most of those offered online through the fall and winter terms this year. Now that's new for many people. And for those coming to university or coming back to university, um, you know, that's going to present some challenges and we, uh, we want to make sure that we, we note that there are many new resources launching soon to support that online learning. Our colleague, uh, Dr. Kathy Boyd Withers, who's with us this morning, um, may be able to touch briefly on that just to let you know what's going on there, but some excellent resources being launched from the Learning Skills Services area and elsewhere on campus, all aimed at helping new learners and returning learners uh, get comfortable in the online space. Um, and learning online can have its challenges, but it also has its advantages. And so uh, that, that training stuff will be really valuable for you to encounter. One thing to keep in mind is that uh, York does eventually plan to return in person. And uh, there are some students who will be uh, having classes online this fall, but many will, uh, most sorry, will be online. Many will be returning to campus for specific courses in science and some in fine arts. Uh, those courses, that must have a face-to-face -face component or an in-lab an in, uh, lab kind of experience. Uh, those are being planned extremely carefully, guided by public health and government directives, and in tandem with other colleges and universities in Ontario. Uh, the, the, the basic message here is safety is the number one priority. Uh, you might have heard some news about what's going on in the United States, where universities were steadfast in their original plans to return to campus, and they're now moving online as a retreat from that stance. York and other universities uh, in Toronto and, and in Ontario saw ahead on this and made plans to uh, offer that full range of courses, most online. And so the university has been working hard since the start of uh, the COVID period to get ready for this. And if you want to learn more about what we've been doing, uh, we've got a link here, uh, youbettertogether.info.yorku.ca. And uh, these slides will be available to you uh, through the recording and we can send the slides themselves if you'd like. So um, that link will be available for you. But you can learn more about the university's work uh, in the area of academic programming um, and how we're planning to uh, make a smooth and safe transition back to university for some students. Additionally, uh, Black Lives Matter has been a really big topic this uh, summer period. And we wanna make sure that you know that York stands together against anti-black racism. Our president has um, put together a website and has made a number of addresses on anti-black racism um, and you can read those at the link that's provided here. Um, kind of the, the short version of this because we want to make sure you get on to the rest of your orientation this morning is to say that uh, the, the, you know, the university has made a number of pronouncements um, against anti-black racism but we've also taken a lot of action at York and the president herself has acknowledged that we need to take action in line with the statements that we're making. So you can learn more about the kinds of things York has been doing uh, to stand together against anti-black racism through this website. And there'll be uh, information there about all the range of things, academic and otherwise, that are going on in, uh, in this area. So those are a few points from me. Again, um, I'm, uh, I'm the Director of Learning Skills and Retention here at York. And, uh, my team and I are delighted to welcome you this morning. We're delighted to have uh, our guests, Kathy Boyd uh -huh. and Alan Feynman and uh, Kathleen with us um, to, to talk with you. And I think uh, we'll have a representative from YEMSO as well, as Navani has said. So um, all of us are here this morning uh, working hard to help you with your transition to York. Uh, we wish you well and uh, have a good session this morning. Navani, back to you.
Thank you, Brian. Do you mind stop sharing your screen? Okay. Okay, so I will speak on the Atkinson Center for Mature and Part-Time Student Services that we offer at York University. We are a department that is committed to supporting mature, part-time, and transfer students from admission to graduation. Uh, we serve all three populations, and keep in mind you can be all three at the same time. Uh, please feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions with regards to online learning, starting school, anything you can call me or you can email, we'll be happy to help you. So here at ACMAPS, we have a mature student success series. So it's a set of workshops that we tend to offer in fall and winter. And they're actually workshops developed and facilitated by our peer mentors. They help mature students build a successful transition to university. And some of those um, are maybe citations 101 that we offer, time management, learning APA, MLA, and one that's new for this year that we had a couple of our work study students build it's called Moodle and Zoom Survi survival guide it's actually going to be offered on August 28th September 1st and September 3rd we're in the process of promoting it and creating our um, promotional items for that so please have a look at our events page and our events calendar the information there to register in the zoom details will be posted hopefully by tomorrow um, we also have a mentorship program at ACMAPS and our mentors are usually third or fourth year level students who are here to help you answer questions, give you tips on studying or just there to chat as a mature student like you. They have probably similar experiences and are able to give you their feedback and their experiences at York University that will be able to help you. They also help you navigate the campus resources and the physical space if you need. Also at ACMAPS, we have a mature student first year experience program that was created by our director, Brian Poser, years ago. And what this program is, it's um, we actually encourage uh, mature and transfer students to take this online program for fall 2020, 2021. It's made up of a series of workshops on Moodle, um, where to help you transition to university. These workshops are offered in partnership with Learning Skills Services and the Career Center at York. So now I'll hand it back over to Brian so that he can introduce our keynote speaker, Kathy. Go ahead, Brian. Thank you, Naomi. I forgot to unmute myself there. Uh, it's my pleasure uh, to take a moment to introduce my friend and colleague, Dr. Kathy Boyd Withers. Um, she is a learning skills specialist working in the learning skills services area. Um, a multiple year veteran of the university, I think Kathy, since 2006, if memory serves. Um, and in her role uh, with the Learning Skills Services, Kathy has a number of particular areas uh, of engagement with students and with faculty and staff across the university. Um, but her work primarily um, is to serve as an expert consultant on matters related to learning skills, both for faculty, staff, and for students. Um, and you develop programming, Kathy, for, uh, for this area on your website in print form and as a series of presentations. Um, Kathy is well known across our campus as a terrific partner and an expert in the area of learning skills, uh, so much so that um, you know, her time is often uh, used right up. Um, people want to make sure that she gets the the opportunity to come and visit with them or that they get to visit with her and her staff and her team. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to pass the, uh, the floor to, to Kathy, uh, who's going to talk to you about startup study tips and learning skills. Kathy, over to you. Thank you, Brian, for that <laughs> glowing and um, somewhat intimidating introduction. <laughs> but I am delighted to be here. Um, and I'm just going to share my screen with you today. Let's get that going. Uh -huh. Okay, can everybody see that? Are we good? Yeah, okay. Well, again, thank you so much for having me. I am delighted to be here and delighted that so many of you are here as well. And for maybe the next 20 minutes or so, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, some startup tips for study for remote learning and i'm also going to tell you a little bit about learning skills because that's where where i work and that is one of the services available to you as a student at york 
So I'm just going to start with a, a word or two about what Learning Skills Services is and uh, what we do. We work with all York students of all levels, um, including sometimes graduate students. So the whole range from brand new students like yourself all the way up. Uh, and, and in a nutshell, our role is to help you identify how you learn best and help you develop the learning and organizational strategies and skills needed to achieve your academic goals pretty much no matter what you're studying. These are the kinds of skills that cut across uh, all subject areas. And they are things like time management. Uh, you know, it's a real juggling act <laughs> to be at university and, and often, especially for mature students. Um, effective study strategies, academic reading, all those skills, critical thinking, and so on. How do we do this? Uh, well, we have a number of different services. One of our, our main services are our workshops. Uh, currently, these are all being offered online and our September calendar will be posted up on our website very soon this week, we, uh, we hope, yeah. And uh, we have a range of different topics, as you'll see. Those are one hour long workshops offered as webinars, open to everybody. So you just have to uh, register and then show up and um, you can be part of those participative workshops. We also have a service we call uh, academic peer coaching. We have a peer team who are very well trained, awesome students at York. And you can see some of them in that picture there that was part of our, our team last year. A few of them will be returning again this year. They deliver most of our workshop materials and our services. Um, and the academic peer coaching service is a one-on-one -on -one where you can sign up for a half hour with one of our peers and they can just sort of work with you to help you with any of those skills that we talked about, like helping you just get organized and break your workload down into manageable pieces, um, do some organizing and time management, uh, learn some perhaps reading strategies that'll help you cope with the reading load and that kind of thing. In addition, we also have uh, a lot of resources, tips, strategies, all, the, all that on our website. So we do encourage you to visit our website. Our uh, URL is lss, for learning skills services, .info .yorku.ca. So do take some time and just kind of browse around. You'll see lots of information about us and what we do. This is a list of our current workshop topics. We have over a dozen topics. I'm not going to go through each of them because you can read for yourself and you can go to our website and take a look at the two, but I'll draw your attention to a couple that are really useful for startup times. There's one just for first year students called Starting Off Strong. A little bit about, uh, you know, getting oriented to York and uh, getting started on that path to academic success. We have another one called Secrets of Academic Success, which is a bit of an introduction to all of the different learning skills and some, some tips that help you get going. Another one very popular, really all year long, but also especially at the beginning of term is time management, because let's face it, who doesn't need help with time management? I know you're all probably pretty skilled, you know, um, you've gotten this far in life, but I have to tell you every time I teach the time management one, I remember things that I have forgotten about my own time management. So that's a good one too. The reading and note taking is also very helpful, um, you know, to help you master that reading load and so on, but they're all useful. So I do hope that we'll see you out at uh, these workshops. Okay, so that's a little promo for learning skill services. I just again want to say welcome. You have made just a great choice in coming to York and we're really glad you're here. I want to know what you're most excited about and what you think your biggest challenges will be. I mean, maybe you've already done this already in some previous sessions, but it helps me get to know you a little bit. So I'm going to ask you if you are able to, to contribute to this. I'm not sure if you know how, I don't know how familiar you are with Zoom, but if you sort of mouse up to the top of your screen, you should see um, a little thing that says options. And if you click on that, you'll get a drop down, and the word annotate is there. 
And then when you see the annotate options, there'll be a little text box. So you can click on that and, you, and then you can just write on the screen. And the other option, if that's not um, something that interests you or if you're having trouble getting that to work is for you just to put in the chat. So if you don't mind sharing for a minute, um, what are you most excited about? And what do you think your biggest challenges are gonna be? This is completely anonymous, so you can just uh, be open and, and share about that. Meeting new people, yeah. Good, diving deeper into your field, classes. Multitasking in time now, management, sure, for sure. Starting a new chapter in your life your courses, language, learning new skills. Yeah, that juggling act for sure. And failure, thank you for being honest. I know I think that's something we're all a bit scared about when we start something brand new like this, right? New beginnings, challenges, yeah. Okay, finally getting the chance to go to school. Yes, thank you, I'm glad you're here. The online piece on the remote learning. I know that's a challenge for all of us, <laughs> you know, and, uh, but it's okay. You know, we've got your back on that and it's going to be fine. All right. Thank you. Rebuilding study habits, developing a schedule. Yeah. Great. Thanks so much for sharing. And I hope that you see, you know, even if you didn't write something up there and also if you did, that you're not alone, right? That, uh, that, um, Almost all of these are shared, I'm sure, that, that you're reading these and kind of going, yeah, I'm thinking that way too. So um, that's something we want you to remember is that it, it, you're not alone here. You've got um, ACT Maps to help and services like ours and so on. Okay, so I'm gonna move on now. Thanks again for sharing there. Uh, was there anything in the chat there uh, that people shared? I don't have access to it right now. Anything further? excited about experiencing university life. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, thank you. So let me move on now. Um, and I've got to, whoops, have to figure out how to, how to erase all this. Uh, clear, there we go. Okay. So let me just go back. And I'll close that up. Oh, sorry about that. Clear, okay. So I'm gonna take you back, sorry, <laughs> some of the challenges of remote learning for all of us. Again, clear, good. And I'm now going to, oh, I think I have to stop share and go back in as I remember from having done this before. Okay. Great, thank you. Okay, so uh, these are some just general tips uh, for remote learning, we're calling it, but you know, these are tips for effective studying and getting on the right track to academic success, uh, no matter what, okay? I'm going to go through each of them and talk a little bit about what we mean by that tip, um, and with a particular eye to, to all of you and some of the challenges that you may be facing. So the first tip we want to talk about that's important for studying at university, but especially important now that we're in this remote learning environment, is to establish a structure and routine around your school time, around your um, study time. Uh, and you need to create the structure and the routines that work best for you. That means establishing some boundaries around uh, school time, study time. I would imagine many of you may also be working as well. I don't know for sure. I don't know your personal circumstances. Um, and uh, many of you may have been working or have worked from home <laughs> during the remote uh, you know, period that we're in now where everything's being done online. So I'm sure you know from those experiences as well that it's, that it's very helpful to have some structure. And you know, because of this strange world we're in right now, you have to establish that structure for yourself um, and some routines that are gonna work for you. But we really encourage you to do this for schoolwork as well, okay? I mentioned there to respect the boundaries yourself and ask others to. 
you know, university studying um, is work for sure um, and takes time, as we'll see in a moment, quite a bit of time, but it doesn't often look like traditional work. You know, a lot of it, it might be just reading. Uh, you might be in a study group talking to other people online. So it depends on your home situation. But if you're at home in a family, for example, other people might not really see this as work, <laughs> you know. So that's why you yourself have to respect this decision you have made to come to York um, and put some boundaries around that work time. You have the right to be here. And um, it's, it's important for you also to know that. And that may involve some juggling and a little bit of renegotiating of the roles that you're used to and familiar with, right, for everybody. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Because university learning takes time, it takes a lot of time. I think creating sufficient time for the deep learning that you need at university is really the first prerequisite for success uh, at university is to allow yourself enough time. It's a full-time job to be a full-time student. So in most programs, full-time studies are five courses per semester. Uh, it varies a little bit depending on the program. But you know, if you're taking five courses and you look at your schedule, you see a lot of empty space. So your five courses don't take up 35 to 40 hours a week. But the way the learning is structured at university, um, all those empty spaces in between classes, you will need in order to learn, in order to do readings, do assignments, uh, review the work, make sure that you're building the understanding. So it's important to really understand right from the beginning how much time is needed. I'm not saying this to scare you. I'm just saying that's how the learning is structured at university. So you need to plan all your other responsibilities around this, you know, to free up that much time for your university work. And, you know, if you do realize that you actually don't have that much time, then, you know, that's okay. You can be flexible about how you structure your learning journey as you go forward. And so sometimes we recommend to students, if, if for example, you have a job and you have to work 25 hours a week or 30 hours a week at your job, probably not the best idea to be juggling a full course load, right? So you need to sort of look at your own schedule and what's going to work. For, for yourself. But I do encourage you, first of all, be realistic. And secondly, be kind to yourself. You are not a machine, a productivity machine. No one can work, you know, 80, 90 hours a week. So again, this is why we really like to stress from the beginning how much time is necessary for academic success so that you can create a structure and routines and a schedule that are going to work best for you. So the second tip we offer is to establish your own study space. Ideally, it, uh, that would be a dedicated study spot just for you that has few distractions, some space for you to store your study materials. But we do understand every home is different. That may not be possible for you. Do your best with what is possible, keeping in mind though that having a good space to study um, is really important especially now where we don't have as many options as we used to have. You can't really go up to York to study there. There's lots of study space there. And when you get back to the campus, which at some point we will, um, you'll, you'll explore some of those options. But for now, we're pretty much confined to our homes for studying. Even cafes aren't really open to us to sit there with our laptops and study. So try to find or create a space that's gonna work best for you. Essentials, of course, um, you need your own reliable up-to-date computer. Uh, it doesn't have to be the, the best and the fanciest, but it does need to be reliable and, and able to deal with everything. Um, so, uh, you may need to think about that. Uh, again, it may not be possible if you're living in a household with several people for everyone to have their own, but it sure is ideal if you can. And of course, you need a strong, dependable Wi-Fi signal in your study space uh, because everything is being done online right now. The good news about that, by the way, is um, you know learning is still learning. 
Okay, university learning is challenging whether it's in person or online. You can still connect with other people online. I mean, we've been doing this now for months. And I have to say that the fears I had at the beginning, um, I realized now I didn't need to worry about so much because it's still possible to connect with, with colleagues and, and even to meet other people. Um, so it's not an ideal time we're in, but it's gonna be okay. And please do keep that in mind. Also on the positive side, you're not gonna get lost on campus right now. <laughs> trying to find your way to classes. York's a big, big campus, and it could take a while to get oriented there. So at least you're not gonna get lost on the way to your own computer <laughs> in your own home. So look on the bright side, right? Okay, the next tip that cuts through all of our materials at Learning Skills Services is to be an active learner. University learning is not about memorizing facts and figures. It's not a passive activity. Um, you need to be really engaged in your learning. And it's really exciting. I, as some of you mentioned when I had you put up those things on the, on the whiteboard a couple of minutes ago, you know, that you were excited about the stuff you're gonna be learning and being able to dive deeper. So that's totally the right attitude for academic success at university. Because the key to success is that active, independent learning. Again, it's helpful to understand the structure of learning at university. So in class time, very important, uh, it's for presenting the approach and the ideas. I call university learning kind of a guided independent learning model. The guided piece, that's the in class, that's the structure of the course that the prof has designed for you. You know, they've picked readings, they've organized uh, a, a logic of how they want the, the material to go, what they want you to learn, okay? So that's what in-class time is for, for, for listening and engaging uh, in the lectures. You might have tutorials with teaching assistants where you have more time for discussion. So you wanna be actively engaged there. Um, but it's also important to realize, as I mentioned already, the learning piece, all the reading, the reviewing, working on assignments, that's all up to you outside of class time. And that actually takes more time than in class time. So, so, so important to really understand that right from the beginning, because often students get their schedule. And as I said already, they see open space and they think, oh great, good, I'll have all this time to do everything else. Without understanding that's not open space, that's learning time and study time, independent learning time. And a ballpark figure, if you're, for, I mentioned the full-time job thing, and there it is up again on the screen, full-time study requires 35, 40 hours a week. But um, let's say you're not taking uh, five courses. You may be wondering, well, how much do I need? So we suggest you begin by planning at least an hour and a half of independent study time per in-class hour every week. So half again as much time. I don't mean that one specific hour of a lecture requires an hour and a half of studying that hour's material. I just mean in terms of creating uh, an effective and sustainable study schedule for you to free up that much time. Trust yourself. You can do this, right? Um, and, and again, you've made such a great choice in coming back, such a great choice for your own growth right and uh, and for your career and everything else and there are lots of resources to help you again a little plug for learning skills services we are one of the of the many resources and you'll find out about more as you go along the next piece we want to stress is to first of all identify and stay connected to your motivation generally speaking um, mature and transfer students are motivated. <laughs> you know, you 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 know you're here. You've chosen to come here, rather than than as sometimes can happen with younger students who are just coming straight from high school. It's kind of expected. They haven't necessarily really thought about exactly why they want to be at university. So, as a group, you guys generally are more aware of your motivation than than other groups. Um, so it's important to stay connected to your motivation, but also enjoy it being at university. Um, part of your motivation, I hope, is to 
grow and enjoy this really interesting, stimulating environment that you have, have joined by coming to York. I also encourage all students to follow your interests. Okay, I know it's a tough world and many of you may have very specific career related reasons for coming back, which is totally fine. But no matter what, try to leave a bit of room to kind of follow your interests. There, there is some room for exploration and discovery, especially in first year. Um, you may discover whole areas of study that you never knew about and that you discover you're good at or that are really fascinating to you. So this is your time. And it's a time where you can uh, have a little freedom to, uh, to just you know, follow your interests a bit more than maybe you first thought. This is another key message across all of our materials at Learning Skills, to focus on the learning and not the grades. Also, it's totally okay to not know things at first. You are here to learn, you're a student. I know for, for people who are returning to university or perhaps coming for the first time after um, many years doing other things, or if you're transferring from college or whatever, uh, it can be hard sometimes to be back in beginner mode, <laughs> you know, but that can also be a freeing space to just allow yourself the freedom to be a beginner and to not know yet, okay? The learning piece is what is most important at university, not the grade. And I know it's a tough world and, and we are all concerned about performance and so on, but if you learn what it is they're trying to teach you, the grades will follow. And so if you find yourself getting anxious, you know, let's say maybe you get a test result and it's not what you had hoped, um, remind yourself, okay, uh, this isn't maybe what I had wanted, but what can I learn from this to help me improve for next time? And it's really about making sure that you are learning what it is they're trying to teach you in all your different courses. The course syllabus, the course outline, is your best friend. <laughs> it's a guide to what the course is trying to teach you. So most uh, course outlines have course objectives at the beginning of them. Those are really important. Often students read them over right at the beginning, and you may not even really understand it right at the beginning, so then you kind of forget about it. And you move on to look at the deadlines, totally important as well, and the layout of the course. But we always encourage students to revisit that course syllabus frequently throughout your, 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 the course. It's a guide to what it is that they want you to learn in this course. And if you find, like in the first week, you read course objectives, and it looks like a, just a bunch of you know, academic jargon <laughs> to you at first, don't worry. Those um, objectives should become clearer to you as you go through the course. And it's, that's feedback for you as well. It's a bit of a guide as to whether or not you're kind of grasping the essentials of what they are trying to teach you in that course. So I put this in the motivation piece because it can help you sort of stay connected to the course and, and, and help you set your goals for the course and so on. So do keep an eye on the course outlines as you go along. And then the final tip, the final area I want to talk about is balance, balance and well-being. Uh, and that can be the hardest one <laughs> I often find for all students, but especially for really busy people, uh, for uh, mature students, transfer students and so on, you're usually juggling a lot of stuff in your lives. So I really want to highlight this one. It is so important because balance, physical, mental, health and well-being are so essential for energy, for learning, right? Especially during these times. It can be extra challenging to make space for you and for your own well-being. So always make time for that, no matter how busy you are. In fact, you know, sometimes students will come to me and we'll talk about that and somebody back in the before times, it might have said, uh, oh, well, I like to go to the gym, but I don't have time. <laughs> you know, I would sometimes say to them, well, you know, that's probably your cue that you really need that time kind of for your physical health and your mental health and so on. So when I hear a student saying, I don't have time to stay balanced, uh, and for you too, that should be your cue 
oh, I really need now to, to just step back for a little bit, take a few deep breaths, try to build something into my schedule um, for me to manage my stress and stay balanced because that's just so important. This may mean to make that time, again, you may need to renegotiate your other responsibilities and commitments to make time for this. What happens with really busy people, and I, I will confess, I do this to myself too, and so every time I teach this, I remind myself, um, for really busy people, the challenge is to stay balanced. We often take time out of our own you know, well-being time in order to get everything done. So I, I hope that you won't be doing that and that you will understand how important this is. Also remember fun, social connections, relaxation are an important part of life <laughs> and of university life too, and they contribute to your academic success. Nobody can study all the time. The brain needs some rest, right? And, and a chance to recharge and switching gears away from just being in the books all the time. So I do hope you'll remember this uh, throughout your time with us here at York. Okay, that wraps up what I wanted to say. And I want to reiterate again, what a great decision you've made in coming here. I hope that you enjoy your time at York. I hope you connect with Learning Skills Services and we get to meet every one of you over uh, the next uh, little while. And remember, you can do this. So thanks very much and uh, enjoy the rest of your day and your term at York. Thank you, Kathy. If you can stop sharing your screen, I'll go back to my screen. Okay, Kathy, there was a couple of questions in the chat. Do you want to deal with those now or? Um, sure, that's fine by me if that's okay with you guys. Yeah, that's, that's okay. okay. Dilraj, do you want to read them to Kathy? I can't see them right now, sorry. I think you're on mute, Dilraj. Sorry. Um, so one of the questions was from uh, Mary Son. She was asking, would you advise taking fewer classes online right now? Um, I would say, uh, you mean than in person, correct? To, to take fewer courses online than you would in person? <laughs> um, I, I don't really think that if the online piece matters to that. I think it depends on you yourself and uh, your overall schedule, as I said, can you create enough time, right? Um, also, if you do find though that, that screen time is tough for you, <laughs> I suppose that is something you could consider. But generally speaking, um, I don't see a big difference between the number of courses you would wanna take online versus, versus in person. I think that's kind of up to you and your overall schedule and, and preferences. I also encourage new students uh, as well to keep an eye on the drop dates. There is a fair amount of, of room, <laughs> you know, so you can start and, you know, I'm not encouraging people to drop courses, but it is an option. Um, and, and, you know, you can try it. And if you find after a couple of weeks that it's not working for you, that's maybe something you could consider, but uh, yeah. Thank you, Kathy. And the other question was just, do you believe online learning will increase or decrease the estimated study hours students should be spending? Okay, good question. Uh, again, I don't think the online piece um, impacts the number of study hours. Um, I think what's, well, no, I was gonna say what's more needed online, but you need this for success in person as well, is the initiative. But, but the onus is always on the student to stay connected uh, to the course. And so that means reminding yourself to check in all the time with like your York email, the Moodle site for the course. Uh, and so because you're studying at home and you know the prof may not be remembering to tell you to do that or whatever, you may want to just remind yourself of that piece more often. It doesn't necessarily take more time, but it is uh, up to you to really make sure that you stay connected so that you know what's required all the time. Thank you, Kathy. You're welcome. Thank you. 
Okay, so we'll move on now to our other part of our orientation, which is to our mature student panelists. So we have two peer mentor, mature student peer mentors with us today. Um, we have Alan Feynman and Katalin Halatz. Both Katalin and Alan are psychology students. They're in their fourth years. I will be asking them a few questions with regards to their experience as a mature student on campus and um, you'll get to hear their story and what they have to offer. So we'll start um, with Alan and Catalin. My first question to you would be, what brought you to York University and why did you decide to return to school? Alan, you wanna go first? Oh, you have to unmute yourself. Okay, so um, I was uh, in LA at the time and I, I called up York University. At the time I was uh, about 58 and I said, do you have any uh, low tuition rates for a very, 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 very mature student? And uh, they said, well, yes. So uh, actually when you reach 60, we waive the tuition. So that was an incentive. Now I, I did uh, uh, come to York uh, in 1971, straight out of high school, and I lasted two weeks. I got intimidated by the large lecture halls and the, and the big reading lists because I hated reading. So then I went to a community college and, and got a communications diploma, which for me was basically a waste of time. But that was in 75. So about 40 years later, I decided to go to York and you know, people say the longer you're out, it's the harder it is to get back in. For me, it was almost the opposite. I just went, I just, uh, and I was a C plus student in high school, but now uh, I'm doing very well. I, I, I uh, so, and I put the time in and the time management for me is, is pretty simple. You know, I, I've said this before, say I have a hundred pages to read and I have 10 days to do it. I do 10 pages a day. I don't look at it as a whole big block that I have to do because that's intimidating. So um, I just break it down. And uh, I mean, I don't, I'm not married, so I don't have any kids or a wife. Um, so uh, I have a lot of time and I, I put the time into the, uh, I do some pre-studying. Pre, I mean, I'm even studying now for the fall course uh, to, to, to be ready. So I like to be uh, completely ready before each lecture. It's more of an insecurity on my part, since I, I don't see myself as, as being as brilliant and as intelligent as other people tell me I am, but I, no, I'm just kidding. So uh, anyway, so that's, that's basically it. I don't know, did I answer your question? Uh, yeah, you did. Is Catalin there? Yes, I'm here. Can you see me? Uh, yes. Okay, Kathleen. So what brought you to York University and why did you decide to return to school? Hi, everyone. Yes, uh, the reason I came back to uh, school because um, when I came to Canada uh, over 30 years ago, I studied before I came here, I studied psychology as I was an EC teacher. And I always wanted to go back to a uh, university or go to university to finish um, a degree. And uh, when I, um, when my children, my two daughters finished university, um, I decided it's my time to go back and study psychology. So now I'm studying to be a relationship therapist. And I was in my forties when I um, came back to school and I'm loving every minute of it because as uh, mature students, we are more organized. And I think generally we do much better. Hey, thank you, Kathleen. My next question for both of you, um, Alan, you could go first, is what was your experience as a mature student? Um, for Alan, you were both a mature and transfer student, so if you could speak to that. Well, as, a, as I said, I, I took a communications course at Centennial College from 73 to 75, so I did get transfer credits from way back then. I got the 15 transfer credits. But those were just credits, just general credits. It wasn't for anything specific. And um, what was what was the other question? So, what was your experience as a mature student and transfer student on campus? Oh well, as a mature student, I, I was surprised. I thought everybody would be giving me double, uh, like a double take. 
you know, who's this guy? Why is he here? But when I was in the uh, classroom, you, you know, and obviously I'm not the teacher, I'm sitting in the, in the class, I, uh, I didn't feel intimidated by my age. And, um, and, and, and actually they were talking uh, at one point about, uh, about Lincoln. And I actually got to tell them that I was there at the time. I was living in the log cabin next door to Lincoln. And he was a, he was a very tall man. And I asked him, I said, how, how long does one's legs have to be? Because he's so tall. He said, just long enough to, to reach the ground. So he was a very funny man. And he was a good man. And so I could, you know, bring in my expertise from uh, due to my uh, uh, age. Yes. Okay, thank you, Alan. And Kathleen, what was your experience as a mature student? Well, firstly, because uh, my English wasn't um, up to the academic standards, I've, I struggled a little bit with that. So I took many writing courses. I utilized all the workshops they were offered. And also, I went every single week to the writing center to, um, to help me to get um to help me with my writing skills uh, my other experience which got better obviously over over the years but the other experience i had when i walked into a class most of the time they thought i was the professor because i was so much older <laughs> older than the uh, students but then over time i also find that i made a lot of friends many many friends because people seem to um and gravitate towards me, maybe because of my maturity. And I find that uh, for the other um, mature students, it might happen as well. I always smile, I say hello to people. I don't feel intimidated again because I have more life experience. And um, I make many friends and I also connect very easily with the professors and uh, teachers assistants. And I recommend that uh, you new students do that as well. It just makes your life easier when you have friends and you are on good terms with your professors. Thank you, Kathleen. My next question for both of you is, uh, did your mature student experience teach you something that you did not know beforehand? Uh, well, um, I don't know if I really realized this or not, but at the time, but the the professor's office hours I, I i definitely took advantage of and it seemed that i was about the only one that did that a lot of younger students they're either shy or they just can't be bothered i just would make an appointment if if i had questions and said can i see you doing your office hour and he said sure so i definitely and i was i was not shy about asking questions in class um and, uh, you know, I just figure, you know, no question is really stupid. Any question is valuable. And uh, I, I, I had a sense of, of being free in the class, but that's due to my age. If I was younger, I, you know, it'd probably feel different. So um, it's kind of a freeing experience that, you, you, you know, it, and uh, yeah, I guess that's about it. And Kathleen, for you? Can you ask me the question again, please? I sure. was uh, listening. Sure. Did your mature student ex experience teach you something that you did not know beforehand? Well, I didn't know I can be so good at time management. <laughs> and the, uh, I mean, I thought I was good, but I think I became so much better because now everything is in my calendar. I make myself list, daily list, what I need to um, achieve. And as I'm achieving them, I'm clicking them out. Um, also, uh, as Alan was uh, mentioning, I became even more brave and I spoke a lot to my professors and teachers assistants and made friends. So I know I was friendly, but I think I became even more friendlier and it really helped me to achieve my goals as I wasn't uh, just like Alan, I wasn't afraid to ask questions. Okay, thank you. Navani, can I just add something to the, that? Sure. I just, I just uh, remembered as a mature student, I, I, real, I didn't realize this at first, but I have more patience now. 
I remember when I was much younger, if I had, to, if I was reading something, I'd always think of a shortcut. How do I get through this? I don't want to read this whole thing. I'll see the movie instead. If there was a movie based on the book, that's why I, I never read, you know, I never read the Bible. I just saw the movie. Uh, but anyways, um, so, uh, but now I have patience. I, I seem to have patience. If, if I have say 20 more pages to read, I'll just kind of relax, take it step by step. And then I, I, I may reward myself a little bit, you know, after reading, I'll just go for a, for a walk or, or relax in the park or something. Um, so it's not constantly read, 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 but you know, so that's it. I have more patience, I think. Okay, so I'm gonna, this is gonna be my last question for you both because I'm keeping an eye on the time. I see it's 10.56, so we'll move on shortly. So the last question I have for both of you is, as you know, we're currently in the midst of a global pandemic and York U has moved classes online. We'll be doing this for fall. Um, how are you dealing with online classes? I know both of you actually had to finish uh, your winter term with online classes. And was it doable for you? And how have your professors helped you in that process? so that you could share that experience with others coming in for this fall? Um, it, it was doable, but it, it hardly affected me in my class. So I, I, you know, during the March, it was maybe one class that was on Zoom, but just doing Zoom here gets you to uh, get the experience of, of, of how it works. And I just got an email from my first professor for the fall course about the syllabus and all this and the, and, um, you know, he said that it's 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 very doable. It's just certain things you have to uh, uh, prepare for. Um, and uh, you know, I can't really say anything more since I haven't really engaged fully in the online uh, uh, environment. But uh, okay, we'll move to Catalin because I know Catalin, you finished um, your courses in March, and then you actually did summer classes as well. I did. I actually liked it very much because. I didn't have to travel anywhere, so it gave me extra time to study and get organized. So I set up my little office in my living room, looking out the window, so I see some green space. And I just felt I was even more organized because I did have that extra time. The professors were extra uh, helpful, and I really liked that. They were very easy to communicate with. They got back to me almost immediately, maybe also because they didn't have to travel. And the teacher's assistants were also very helpful. So I actually quite enjoyed my uh, study time through Zoom. Okay, thank you, Kathleen. Thank you, Alan, again, for being with us today. We appreciate it. Um, I do have a video of one of our other peer mentors, Kate, um, but we will send you this uh, presentation and you can actually find the recorded version on our website as well under our orientation page. So I won't play that video right now due to time constraints. Um, we'll move on to um, our York University Mature Students Organization. Um, we have Susanna Ligetti from this organization who will speak to their um, group and what they do and what events they may have planned and how they're gonna operate for fall. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and we'll go into speaker view. So Susanna, if you can please um, start speaking, we'd greatly appreciate it. Are you there, Susanna? She's muted. Oh, can you unmute yourself, Susanna, please? Hear me? Yes, there you are. Go ahead. Good. Hi. Hi, mature students. Welcome to York University. Hope you're finding the orientation session beneficial. I hope you can see me because I'm I was kind of playing around with my computer or my chair, that is. Uh, the York University Mature organization, which is better known as YUMSO. It's a volunteer student club established in 2004 and is the only student-run club for mature students at York University. As, uh, with around 400 members, including single parents, as well as senior students like myself, our main goal is to serve York's community of mature students attending in person and those studying remotely by connecting students who have life experience with other students in similar situations. And YUMSO also works closely with ACMAPS to connect you with mentors who can guide you through challenges, concerns, and obstacles that you may experience as a mature student. 
Under normal circumstances, our home on campus is at Banyay College, room 113B, located on the ground floor. Our cozy lounge provides a place for mature students to network, relax, have lunch, or simply socialize with others. The lounge is stocked with complimentary tea, coffee, and snacks. To use our fridge, our microwave, your lunch, and also have access to two desktop computers. In the past, we've organized a variety of events, such as our open house last September, pub night, coffee meetups, and our holiday party in December, where your entire family is welcome to attend. Unfortunately, because of COVID-19, the physical lounge will not be open this fall. However, our online presence through social media and emails will keep you connected with one another, as well as inform you of events like a monthly virtual social get together. We'll also keep you posted when the lounge will reopen. As for the winter, we've yet to find out what restrictions will be in place for next year. Uh, even if the university reopens fully in the winter term, uh, we recognize there'll be unique challenges for mature students and to do in-person attendance, possibly with compromised health, childcare issues, and the very real possibility that many students will choose to remain on, off campus and complete their academic year online. YAMSO volunteers are the key to our success. It is thanks to the generous donation of our volunteers' time that we've been able to keep YUMSO running, both in person and online. The role that volunteers play in our organization uh, is vitally important to us. Uh, and uh, we need people to come forward to participate, and that is how we provide more programs. Uh, since our executive team so far this year is very small, we're looking for people to join us. So if you're interested in being a part of YUMSO's executive team, check our social media, our emails, our Twitter, Instagram, and especially Facebook, where we will be posting information on which positions are open and how to join. And if you have any expertise, or even if you don't, or information uh, you'd like to share with your fellow mature students, or if you have any questions uh, to support, for any additional support, up us the line at yumsou at gmail.com or Facebook at yumso slash Twitter, at yumso slash Instagram, at yumso underscore you. Thank you, so team, all from the yumso team. Okay, thank you very much, Susanna, for that information. Um, so basically, that is the end of our orientation for today, part three. Uh, we will, like I said, be uh, posting our recording on our website, Jill Raj. Um, I think she's already put that into our chat. I'm just going to go back to our screen. Brian, if you'd like to say a few words to end, it's up to you. Let me know. And we'll ask any questions after Brian's finished. Go ahead, Brian. Thank you, Navani. I just wanted to thank all of our, our participants today, uh, Kathy, Alan, Catalan, and Susanna for your contributions. And to all of you students who are just starting out, uh, you know, this is a lot of new information. We've seen some of you at earlier sessions, and for some of you today, maybe your first one. Um, we hope that you'll feel free to reach out to us uh, if you have questions further from those today. Um, I think uh, there's a number of questions in the chat. We've been trying to answer those as they've come along. I really hope that we've gotten to all of them, but if, uh, if we miss one or if you'd like to ask us further questions, feel free to reach out to us. And you can call us, as Jill Raj is saying here, at 416-736-5770. I think that goes to Navani these days. That's uh, linked up to her. Um, but once again, thanks to all of uh, our participants and to all of you for coming. Uh, we wish you well in the transition in the next couple of weeks and uh, in the year ahead. Uh, again, we're here for you. Uh, we want to help you to be successful, and we uh, we have lots of great resources to help you be just that. So uh, don't be shy. Uh, Navani, back to you. Okay, thank you, everyone. We'll go into the question period right now. I'll just stop the recording, and I'll go into gallery view. Hold on one second.